Hello, friends. My name is Mike O'Brien, director of the Vineyard School of Worship. Our summer session is returning live this June 2022 in Columbus, Ohio. The summer session is for worship leaders age 18 to 35 that want to take their gifts to the next level. They need refreshment. They need encouragement. This is the event for you. Our faculty lineup is so good. I can't even begin to list all the incredible people we have. You're not going to want to miss it. So send your worship leader, send somebody, anybody that is in that age bracket for training and equipping, it's going to be incredible. For those who register early, host homes will be available to you and most meals are provided. Go to vsow.org, use the code FERMENT15 for 15% off. We'll see you at summer session. Send somebody, send anybody. Take care. Welcome to the Ferment Podcast, conversations about worship and transformation. This week, we have another Vineyard School of Worship takeover with Mike O'Brien and Melissa Keller. Welcome, everybody, to the Ferment Podcast. This is a Vineyard School of Worship VSO takeover of the Ferment. My name's Mike O'Brien. I'm the director of the Vineyard School of Worship. And I'm Melissa Keller, Director of Events and Project Management for Vineyard Worship. Yeah, so Melissa and I are out here in Denver this week. I don't know when this podcast will hit, but we're at a leadership meeting for some of our wonderful vineyard pastors and leaders. And we saw Adam's podcast gear and we said, hey... Let's grab his podcast Let's gear. Let's steal it. <laughs> <laughs> we got something to say. So, uh, <laughs> Melissa and I have been working with Vineyard Worship and been in the vineyard for a minute. So, we're just like, hey, let's have a conversation about some stuff. There's yeah. some things we have been thinking about and talking about uh, just one on one. And we're kind of practitioners. We are event planner people. We are nuts and bolts people in our churches and for the movement, for the worship leaders in our movement. So we just thought we'd riff for a while. So we hope this is interesting to you guys and that you guys get some stuff from this. Melissa, I want to kind of do a couple of things. One is talk about lessons learned These past couple of years, I I feel like we're kind of at this two year mark, right? Where we're looking back and we're saying, oh my goodness, (laughs) what just happened? And I'm a Facebook person, so I get that notification that tells me my memories, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, they're sending me the memories from 2020, Uh, right? Have you guys seen those? Uh Mm -hmm. (laughs) The pictures, all the, the boxes of podcast gear and camera gear and Mm -hmm. what was going on on your picture mine was zoom boxes (laughs) like little setups at home but to zoom that's what we did we didn't do the you know like film it in advance and all that stuff we did it live on zoom that was our (laughs) life Mm -hmm. it's been a crazy two years so um and we remember it well it's it's time to reflect and kind of think back, okay, what are some lessons learned? So that's one thing we want to do. But we also just thought, man, let's talk about events and let's talk about retreat, like something we've got coming up. We've got uh, our summer session and our school stuff is all coming back in person, which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And our retreat is coming coming up in the fall, which yeah. is so exciting. Finally. Mm-hmm. Finally. So we're just going to talk about the value of rest and like talk about some of those rhythms I thought would be really great. Just to review really quick, I oversee the School of Worship, director for that, and we do training for the Vineyard Churches. So our 500 churches in the country, they each have a worship leader, hopefully two or three more, a bass player, a drummer, a few sound techs. And part of my job is to put together events and training to give inspiration and skill training and all sorts of stuff throughout the year for those folks. And Melissa, tell us a little bit about what your role is. Just remind everybody what you're doing here. Yeah. Well, we talk about gather, train, document, inspire, right? That's something we talk about too. Mike, you train. Yep. I gather. So one of my big roles for many years has been our national and regional worship leader retreats. We were 
national for a long time. We moved to two, we moved to three, we moved to four, but now we're back to just one. Very excited to bring everyone together. So that's something I've done a very long time is our retreat. And I also do a lot of our project management, helping get our releases out into the world. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I, you are a gift and a help to so many. And even in these moments of these conferences, you're helping the band and you're giving, <laughs> taking mm -hmm. them out to lunch and giving them waters and just taking care of folks. So. I love it. It's my favorite part, really. That's taking so care good. of people. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about lessons learned the past two years. I've got some thoughts, but I want to hear from you. Like, can we talk just a minute about the loss mm -hmm. with our worship leader hat on? What have you lost these past two years? What is gone temporarily, forever? Like, what is that? Have you processed through that? I would say the biggest is that the people, right? Mm. There's been a lot of divide, a lot of loss there as far as yeah. people. But we didn't experience that in the beginning. Actually, we, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, was there were huge gains, it felt like. Yeah. You know, our church in particular, we share a building and we do not get full access. And in California, they wouldn't let churches meet uh, for a long time. And so we opted to just go to Zoom yeah. and, immediately. What I loved about that is you gained a lot in relationship. Like we moved from looking at the back of one another's heads to seeing each other in the face. And we were talking very intimately in small mm. groups and really getting to know everyone. Like you normally come in and you sit across the building from pe yeah. groups of people, you get your normal seat and I sit here and then other people sit across the building and you never talk to them or encounter them, but we were all able to encounter one another in a really real and rich way. So there's yeah. a lot of gain in that. But once we went back to, well, first of all, actually once, people started to get fatigued by that. So you'd start to feel some loss and then, you know, political things and all kinds of things going on. Yeah. You just kind of felt cut after cut after cut, which I know a lot of churches have experienced and we have not gained all that back still. Mm. So there's still a lot of loss. And sometimes you look, you still wonder where certain people went, like, where did, <laughs> where did they go? You know, oh, still kind yeah. of wondering that. Um, yeah. So I think that's been the biggest, the biggest loss. I yeah. Think. Yeah. yeah if, I think, in worship ministry, in ministry in general, there is a coming and going yeah. of volunteers and people. But we really just, wow, just experienced a lot of it all at once, mm -hmm. you know? And like the realization, I think I saw an article today that's like, yes, are, are correct, they are not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. from a year ago, we had brought back 67% of the people and it's up to like 68% or something like this is it mm -hmm. like this is probably going to be it and new people are going to be those that we share the gospel with and they join the church or you know it, it's just it's not going to be the people we thought yeah you know and it's really really sad I think about just the rhythms that were lost yeah. our church did our first Ash Wednesday service in March of 2020, you wow. know, and there's a sense of like, oh, cool, we've got this new rhythm. And it felt so good to be together in that way and be, you know, like have this service that marked the beginning of Lent. And immediately everything changed, right? And so, like, things we just were starting new, we just lost mm -hmm. these rhythms and have to regain them. And then all the investment, like, if you're a worship leader like me or your director, you, you make a lot of investment in the stage and in little parts, you know, your three ring binders or your j just all the the stuff of, of ministry through the pandemic. It all got ripped apart mm -hmm. and torn. You know, you took the lights from the sanctuary and brought them to the pastor's house and all, all the all the things. It's not everything. Yeah. And spiritual people would say, get over it. You know, the kingdom's bigger than that. But just all those investments we've made through the years, in a lot of ways, we've had to start over. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of kind of sad, kind of hard. A lot of people have lost, lost their buildings or things like that. So there's just a lot to process there and to be sad about and be yeah. like, man, that that's not cool. That I, we, you know. And I think to your rhythm point too, I think it feels like people have gotten out of church rhythm or had yeah. for quite a while. Like it just kind of threw everything off to where your church rhythm was off. And so there was a period, you know, after we started to come back together yeah. in person where people weren't coming back or everyone was busy. There was a point where everyone in our worship ministry, it felt like they were busy, <laughs> but I think sure. it's because people were yeah. like, I'm getting out. I am yeah. going, I'm 
taking my weekend with my family and I'm going to do something, you know? And so there was a lot of that. And I don't think that was bad. Mm. I think that, but there was a rhythm that was off, you know? And so that has taken a while to come back. I do feel like for us that has come back, you know? And really when I think about it, I don't think we've had a huge hit to our worship ministry, really. It feels like everyone's back and I'm really excited about that. But it did feel for a while like rhythms were off, you know? And yeah. And things were so different. It took quite a while to get back to it. We're still not there in some, in some ways, yeah. you know, but it felt like that to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I wonder in the same theme of just kind of looking back at two years, what are some things that maybe have changed that have been really good and that you feel like, well, this will be nice <laughs> going forward? Is there any anything in your context in Fullerton, in Southern... This is what's great about this conversation is... I think our gift mixes are are similar in ways. Uh, Our approach is way different and our geography is way different. Like I'm in the Bible Belt in Georgia and you're in SoCal. So I just think it's a cool reflection. What what are some things that may be lost or things that are changed that change that are welcome that you're like excited about? That's a good question. Something I've been thinking about is I think when we first went into pandemic world, right? you want to go back to what's familiar, right? I think, I I feel like for me, especially that was, that's your instinct. What is comfortable, what is comforting, what is familiar. So like, even down to like, I wanted to eat Kraft macaroni and cheese, right? Like, (laughs) I don't need that stuff now. But as soon as we went into pandemic, everything was up in the air. We didn't know what was happening. I'm like, I just really want some Kraft macaroni and cheese. That felt like home to me. It felt like my childhood to me. It felt comforting. So there was like moments like that, right? But for me too, I've grown up in the vineyard. I've been in the vineyard a very long time. I wanted to go back to familiar, to mm, family. Yeah. To, so for me, those were our older classic. Yeah. It's our hymnal in the vineyard. Like yeah. those songs, Refiner's Fire, Draw Me Close. Those songs were coming out of me whenever I'd lead worship on our Zoom, worship in my home. Like I've never had such a flood of songs come out when I'm just in wow. my personal worship. And it was always these older songs. I mean, even stuff beyond that, like just very old songs that were coming out. And at first it felt like therapeutic, right? Mm. Or like something to kind of cling to. But I've held on to that where I'm like, I've forgotten about these and the richness of these. And that this part, now mac and cheese in your diet is not the best part of your diet, but there's certain things that actually are really good for your diet, right? So like like then transfer that to worship. Mm. There are things that that don't need to be lost or we we don't need to move away from. We can actually go back to, but kind of keep and keep them incorporated into it. So I've tried to keep some of those older, simpler songs. Yeah back in our routine again, like these songs are good. These are rich. This is part of our heritage. I've been excited about that. I don't want those to be gone. I want those to to carry on with us. I don't want to move on to the next big thing. I want to keep that going. You know, you know what I really love is like, I think Piper says that, you know, great worship teaches you to suffer well. Like if you worship robustly, like your lyrical content and your structure and your order in the day of suffering, We'll be prepared for it because of the worship we've done just on, you know, our regular weeks, ordinary weeks. And I feel like in the vineyard, like we really, I felt more prepared Mm. than a lot of the churches that I worked with outside of the vineyard. I feel like we'd been singing those suffering songs, totally. like the yeah. songs of loss. We've we've been acquainted with that and haven't run from that, yes. from the silence, from mm-hmm. uh, walking with those in with infertility or sickness in our communities, bringing that into our musical worship and not just ignoring it mm-hmm. or delegating it to the prayer groups. <laughs> yeah. We brought it into corporate worship. So when the pandemic hit. And even when the summer of the racial discussions and and so much pain and discomfort for many of us mm-hmm. um, in those discussions, having to really look at ourselves and look at our own communities, I think we had some songs to sing. Yeah. You know, to your point, we had some some things to pull, and um, it it was really good. And I I feel like I look at some of the leaders and the people that have survived these past two years with us in our little local church. And I'm like, man, we've got some rock star leaders now uh-huh. Same because they've Same. learned how to set up in the park. They've, they've learned to just go, ah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's just go with the iPhone microphone. We forgot the other fancy microphone, you know, like you just, 
whatever's going to get it done. So I, f- I feel like that's really cool. Like yeah. we've got a whole seasoned group of folks that have really endured. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think after a little break and some rest, we'll be able to say, hey, let's put this to work yeah. in planning a church or doing an, another uh, event, you know, a catalytic event where we need to train leaders. You know, I think we're just ready and more prepared for that. So I do recognize and I think we all need to sit back with the things that we've lost. If you haven't already done that, don't just fly by that, yeah. <laughs> but really recognize it and say, oh, man, this is not cool. I'm not excited about this, but but also find the gifts, gifts in the loss, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. We come away with the core people that have stuck with you through it all, right? Yeah. And it feels like there's a tightness. You're even tighter than you were before, and you've, you've persevered. You've walked this out together, and like you've figured out who your core people are, who you can rely on. Yeah. I'm proud of our church. Like we have just such a strong core, just yeah. always ready to serve and lean in. And that's for worship, but it's throughout our church, you know, and yeah. we're actually discovering a lot of the people who have stuck with us and served are, are now kind of getting um, onto our kind of like leadership team now, yeah. you know, kind of inviting them in like, wow, okay, we've all persevered. We've done this together. We've, we've rocked this, you know, yeah. like let's keep going together and build an even bigger team and, and go to new places that we haven't even thought of before. So, so before we move into the, the topic of retreat and rest, I'm just curious, Melissa, I didn't prepare you for this, but you know, during this year of pandemic, a racial discussion and so much that's been at our feet, the problems with the church, mm-hmm. you know, patterns in the church, things that need to change in the church with power. And we've, mm-hmm. you know, we've the Mars Hill podcast and now the Hillsong conversation. Mm-hmm. Where does worship fit in this for us? How do we process what feels like an attack? It mm-hmm. feels like, oh, great. Worship was already not cool. And now it's getting attacked even more <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like this thing that is precious to us and the thing we've stepped into, many of us have stepped into as volunteers, is just being attacked mm-hmm. and being mocked and memified again. And it's always kind of been that, mm-hmm. you know, the same stupid chords, you know, sing the bridge seventy four times, you know. And some of that's our fault because we've <laughs> we've walked into those into those memes. But are you thinking about that, processing any of that personally or with your teams? Have you thought about that? For me. I haven't looked at it as attack as much yeah. as I've looked at it as bringing things to light, mm. bringing dark things into light. And we know that those things are already there. They are being magnified right now, but yeah. they're not new. Like we're, we're churches, we're full of humans, we're full of failure and sin, yeah. and we're always going to be. And so I just think it's been magnified under a microscope, but I have felt this whole time like this is just bringing things to light which is what God does, yeah. right? With any of our sin. Yeah. And if we allow him to, and honestly, I think if there's things going on in your life, those things will be brought to light yeah. at some point. Like, otherwise they're going to kill you. Really? Like, yeah. it's, So I want things to be brought to light. So for me, I've looked at it with that kind of perspective. Like yeah. the Lord gave me this very vivid picture actually before pandemic hit of this very old vine. And there was actually two f- vines twisted together I really felt him say, I'm separating Hmm. things that have grown into this vine, separating things from the church that have grown into it. It was old growth, right? And so ever since then, I've I've always had that picture in my head, and I've just felt that in this experience. Like, okay, this is God separating out those things, you know? Mm. But then again, those things have always been there and will always be there. So that's how I've looked at it is like, things are going to be brought to light. Yeah. So what can we learn from that? We can learn to be accountable to others, to be in community, yeah. right? And to let people speak into our life, our lives so that we don't go through what yeah. these other pla- where these what these other folks are going through and that goes for our, our pastors but also all of our worship people. Yeah. Like this goes for every single human, every <laughs> single believer, right? Yeah. Like Jesus search my heart and know me. Yeah. That should be all of our prayer, yeah. you know? Yeah, and to find streams of confession. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, like, as things get successful, like, if you have a successful moment or season or year, it's like even more so, like, more streams of confession, more streams of, of vulnerability. You know, and Adam and I talked about this in previous podcasts, like, 
trying to figure out like, why have not more worship leaders, like high profile worship people, it seems like there's less scandal <laughs> mm. uh, in the in the music worship world than there is in the pastor, preacher, mm. author world. And some of that is because I think we're surrounded by community. Mm-hmm. We're not lone yeah. talent and that there is a sweetness in that community. So just being real with those that we're serving with, uh, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be the example of all perfect morality. Mm-hmm. You know, we can, can can and should be finding streams of confession. I've just said many times, I'm in my mid-40s now, so I've, I've just said many times, Lord, thank you for not giving me what I thought I wanted. Right. I yeah. thought I wanted what I see. Mm-hmm. You know, see Chris Tomlin and United touring every night, th- tens of thousands of people every night singing your song that you wrote and lined up to see you and to shake your hand and say, thank you, thank you. I cried at the thing when you sang that song. You know, you changed my life. You know, these are the things I thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. I thought I wanted that kind of glory and success. Or just to think, man, I wish my song was being, you know, like it could be broadcast throughout the whole world or whatever. You know, just Mm -hmm. one song, Lord, test me in this, you know? Mm -hmm. See, and and I, I just see what fame... And money and resources, oftentimes it just hurts yeah. more than it helps. Yeah. And it reveals, like you said, it just reveals a true character. Mm-hmm. So I'm thankful. <laughs> you know, was it? Uh, there's a saying, I think it's Lance Pitluck that says, gifting mm. gets you into a ministry. Yeah. Right? And then char- character. But character will keep you there, yeah. right? So always working on our character and what's inside of us. And, yeah. and it's hard when what we do in worship, yeah. right, looks really similar to what the secular world does, right? Yeah. We are on a stage. Yep. There are lights on us. Yep. There's something clicking in our ear. There's someone telling, there's MDs <laughs> sure. and there's yeah. microphones and people, you come off the stage, you're like, oh my gosh, you're so awesome. Mm. You sing so great. You play that line so great. Like you yeah. get affirmation and, and you're the person on the stage. So I, there's been people that have come up and like, you don't know me, but I know you because I've seen you on stage, right? Sure. You're like, so yeah. all those things look really similar to what we see in the secular world. Yeah. It's fame and it's power and visibility, yeah. right? And so I feel like that's a real, real hard thing if you're not building the care if you don't have the character, right? So yeah. then that's something we need to think about for ourselves, but also people that we raise up is what kind of character they have, what kind of community they have around them, what kind of people can speak into their lives, right? Because we want them to have a long game, but it's real hard if you don't have that stuff and you're on a stage with lights and cameras and and all the other things, right? I think you can fall really quickly, Mm. very easily um, into some tough stuff. The work that we do, the work of a worship pastor that is gathering people for the local church where most everybody's a volunteer. Yeah. This is, you know, it's going to the dance recital of the the ninth grade singer you recruited. It's mm-hmm. going, you know, that's four hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, like it's going and getting coffee with the with the grumpy 65-year-old bass player guy that you know, that's four hours. You know, it's yeah. like there's just hours and hours of just this, mon- you know, monotonous, like caring for people, like s- showing up and just loving on people. This is not the big stage. Mm-hmm. This is not all that other stuff. Right. You know, it's developing people. It's hanging out with people. It's growing and uh, stacking chairs, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, running cables. It's all these things that um, are in the kingdom of God, you know. Yeah. But So if you're doing all that stuff, just know you're not alone. Not alone. You're not alone. Mm-mm. That You're doing the hard stuff. That upper crust, like fancy people, that's like 1%, half right. a percent 
Like it's just most of us are doing the work mm-hmm. and you're not alone in this. Mm-hmm. So Yep, absolutely. So to that point, if we shift gears, talk about, you know, you've you've been in charge of the retreats for vineyard worship for a long time. Give us a little history of the retreat of what we've been doing when you started coming to them and you know, why they're important and why why we're doing them. Yeah. I started as like an assistant many moons ago. Yeah. I will not give the years. And I was brought on because I went to school for event planning. And, yeah. and then I worked at Vineyard Music actually long ago in the events back in the day. So anyway, I was brought into it as an assistant. And, but I, I'm an event person. Yeah. I'm a people person. Like I love gathering people. I love events. I love just especially in the church. I love church gathered events, yeah. right? So that's who I am. That's my heart is just gathering people. I also love musicians and I love worship people. Like yeah. this is, I, there's other podcasts that kind of go back into my story, but sure. this is like how I've been raised. It's yeah. who I am. I'm a vineyard person. I am a worship person. I've been brought up in this. So I have a huge, huge passion for it. So like, this is where kind of this all begins. And I started, I worked a long time ago in it and was brought back to it. Many moons ago, it was in Colorado. There was only one. And I think this was one of our biggest or nearing our biggest ones. It was like Estes Park, Colorado. Yeah. And I remember coming and just being an assistant. Like that's all I I was running the check-in, you know. But I was immediately just hooked, yeah. right? So here's what you experience at a retreat. And you experience a gathered people singing with one voice. And this can happen on a Sunday morning, but on a Sunday morning, it's a mixture of people, right? So it's people who might be new Christians that don't really know what this culture is about. There's yeah. there's all kinds of people in the room, right? A worship retreat is a different beast. It is musicians who love to sing, who are gathered. It is like one heart, one mind, one spirit, yeah. all together as one. And it's powerful. And so in that, you experience this tangible presence of God. Like, yeah. powerful things happen in retreat. So I was hooked, right? And I've been doing that ever since. And so there was one in Colorado, then we expanded to two, one in Colorado and one in the southeast. So yeah. one in the west, one in the east. And and then we just realized, I realized that we weren't reaching kind of every pocket. So we did Northeast retreat for a while yeah. and then we added SoCal and and uh, then we were about to go back to one more national because everyone then decided they wanted to be together, Sure, right? And so we were going to go back to one national and then 2020 hit. But let's just go back to this note of being <laughs> together. Yeah. This is the point of retreats, right? The, re- the point of retreats is being together as one. Yeah. And you're in a space where people are like you. There's a whole bunch of people that are just like you. There's a whole bunch of people who are experiencing things that are very familiar to you, right? Yeah. We get to share stories with one another. Yeah. We get to understand, like we're, we're sharing with people who understand what we're going through, right? So in a retreat, we have worship people from all over the country who come together. Um, and again, going back to, we started to divide, divide people up, but really what we want to be is together. So we, people from vineyard churches around the country, and honestly, there's some throughout the world that will actually join in these retreats yeah. too. They come to retreat to be together. You come, you worship together, you pray for one another, you listen to inspirational talks, and you just spend time together in community, community that, that is like you, yeah. other people that are like you. And it's a huge value. I think we've heard over the years many people say, and actually I've heard multiple people use the word game changer. So not only is it like, oh, it's cool, I get to be with people and hang out, but God moves powerfully yeah. in these retreats, powerfully. We've had people get words that have really changed their lives, right? Where God, they just make space, yeah. right? Retreat, right? You're stopping ministry, like serve, 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 do, 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 yeah. to stop, to rest, to engage with the Lord, to get prayer from others who understand where you're at yeah. and allow the Lord to speak to you and encourage you and bless you. Yeah. So we've heard just a lot of people come away with it. They come away refreshed, right? It feels like these retreats have been next level. Yeah, I think a lot of lives have been changed in retreats. So yeah. I feel like I want to just communicate that it's like bigger than just come hang out with us. Yeah. Way bigger. Right? Yeah. It's kind of a, to me, it's a picture of who the vineyard is. Yeah. 
maybe even more so than when the vineyard than when the pastors gather. It's free of propaganda. Yeah. Like we don't even do well of like promoting ourselves. No. Nope. <laughs> like sure as not. a as a movement. I mean, we try to play some of our, you know, our own songs and stuff, but you know, what got me several years into it was realizing that, oh, like Chris Lazat and back in the day, you know, you'd look over and you'd be like, Oh, okay, Jeremy Riddle's here, or oh, um, Casey Corum's here. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, is that David Root? Like the same David like that's on his name tag Dag, David Root Ruiz? What? Ruiz? Ruiz? What? Is are you the guy <laughs> you're the guy? You're the you're you know, and like and then to learn in hindsight that these guys weren't being paid, you know, mm-hmm. oftentimes they were just paying for themselves to come and hang out and they'd eat with everybody else and hang out with everybody else. Just like this uh, you know, subversion of the power pyramid in such a sweet way. Or what really got me is, you know, you'd have John Barnett there for like two years in a row and he didn't lead worship. Like, or you'd have Brian Dirksen came one year and he didn't lead, you know, it was like, Mm -hmm. wait a second, we got main players here, but you just have regular local church Mm -hmm. folks leading. And then, you know, one year Brian would lead or, you know, something like that. So that's what blew me away was, it's just a picture of our values Mm -hmm. in the vineyard. And worshiping together with brothers and sisters that are all doing the same thing week after week in the trenches. Mm -hmm. It's so heavy. Mm -hmm. And it's not like most gatherings are extrovert driven. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of spaces where people are napping on couches in the lobbies Mm -hmm. and and journaling and writing songs and corn. You know, there's all sorts of different activities happening. It truly, truly has been a retreat. So we've been at this, how many years have we been doing retreats? 20 years? I feel like it's probably about 20. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we haven't. Yeah. Disclaimer that I have not. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, so. Vineyard worship. Yeah. Randy McCoy and some of these old school, like vineyard dudes from back. And and ladies would start gathering at Estes Park back in the day, and it was it was pretty small to begin with. And now yeah. we've you know we normally normally it's you know eighty or hundred people, maybe a little bit more sometimes yeah. when we gather, um, and it's just in that sweet spot yeah. of of what's happening. So our next one is when it is end of September to beginning of October. So it's September twenty eighth through October first, a little bit shorter. Okay, just like a half day shorter. In the southeast, yeah. but everyone is welcome yeah. from around the country. It's a very cool area, very restful area, very beautiful. It'll be beautiful that time yeah. of year. The location we're at is beautiful. It's not, you know, the Ritz Carlton. Just want everyone to like set some expectation, sure. but it's a retreat, right? Yeah. It's a beautiful space. It's a comfortable space. It's an inspiring space. There's beauty all around. There's things you can do all around. You can go into town if you want. You can go zip lining if you want. You know, you can do all these different things and experience um, activities. But also, when we're together, like I said before, we worship, but we do small groups. I think it's something we actually should tap a little bit into here. Is I feel like one of the biggest pieces of this is the small group component. People get a little freaked out about that when you first kind of say, hey, we're going to do this. Like, not everyone likes it. However... I have yet to hear a lot of negative yeah. come back. In every survey we put out, people are like, my small group was amazing, you know? Yeah. So what we do is we divide up people in the mornings after worship into small group to pray for one another. Yeah. And there are safe spaces. There are spaces where we can just really share what's going on in a real way. They're very, very small groups. So you yeah. can have this sacred time to really be real and raw. And then you bring those things before the Lord and people come alongside you and pray with you and let the Lord speak to you on that and and stand beside you in those things and bring encouragement. So yeah. I think that's a really, really, really important part of our retreat as well. It's just this like small group prayer and support and encouragement for one another. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, people have committed their annual vacations to our retreats. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's like once you go to one, it you go, oh, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And the Asheville one's really good. Asheville is the Portland of the South. Yep. So <laughs> it, lots of fun people in Asheville. You get an afternoon off, you go to downtown Asheville. Mm-hmm. And then Black Mountain, which is a town that's even closer to the center that we meet in. Okay. It's like a Hallmark Channel town. Yeah. Right? A couple of hipster coffee shops and like just beautiful, you know. So it's it's so refreshing, so good. It's worth the investment to 
make it there, you know, and, and it'll be so good being together in person after a couple of years, it's going to be a really, really sweet time. And like you said too, like there's multi-generational people together and we get to talk and share and relate to one another in that way. But there's also, we do training bits. So you get, you get training opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, It's just like, Hey, if you want to, we're doing a set list thing. We want to learn a little bit. Yeah. You know, that's optional if you want, there's worship together, but there's always speakers that are really, really amazing. And then, and this will happen in the Southeast. We do our evening hangouts Yeah, because we just want to hang out together. Right. So we often go out into the city, hang out, take over a whole restaurant. (laughs) And a lot of times if we still have it this year, we just, pass guitars around and people yeah. perform, you know, you know, pop songs and yeah. soul songs and rock songs. And everyone just has a really, really, really good time. It's yeah. Really it's fun. like, I've never was a party person. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, but when I go to these retreats and everybody's hanging out and they're having pizza, you know, this is like at nine o'clock at night after yeah. our main session's over, we'll all just go retreat to an establishment. It's so life giving because mm-hmm. you see people, you know, they're singing old spirituals and then they'll go into a Tom Petty song yep. and then we'll just start worshiping together. And then so you look over and somebody's praying for the cops mm-hmm. and, you know, and then the waitress is crying, you know, like just yeah. what it, it's just a beautiful picture of the kingdom. Um, it's so good. It's so, yeah, people have been healed, like just yeah. not in our group, but our group outside of the group setting praying for people in the restaurant and they get healed you know like so good we've had such such great things happen and i want to say too like we say vineyard worship leaders but everyone's welcome and bring your small group leaders bring your youth leaders you know if you're not in the vineyard you are so welcome to join us like just come bring whoever if this feels interesting to you i feel like you should just come and experience it we would love to have you it's a really sweet time so this this idea of rest it's a unique place like i think we would encourage you to find weekly rhythms of rest yeah. right yes, obviously sure. a sabbath if you're not living in that space as a worship leader let me just encourage you to yeah. find a weekly rhythm of rest if you're a, a, a mom or you are you've got some crazy jobs around you you know you might only be able to do a half day i don't know what it is but find rest find a weekly rhythm mm-hmm. to stop mm-hmm. everything um, and tell everybody when it is. Mm-hmm. Tell the whole world. So the whole world knows that Mike is not available on Monday mm-hmm. <laughs> or Melissa's day is Friday. She just, you just can't get a hold of her. Like that people would know, yeah. kind of know your schedule and, and wouldn't bug you. I think it's really important. And your pastor wouldn't send you song ideas or, hey, I got something important I got to tell you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So encourage you guys to find rest. Encourage you also to we talk about this a lot is not be on stage all the time. Yeah. And that's part of what makes the retreat so awesome is that people are out in the congregation just looking up. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that's too rare of a thing Mm -hmm. for many of us. We need to be part of our congregations. We need to be on the floor. That's where the gig is, is Mm -hmm. on the floor. Mm -hmm. So we need to join that congregation and take breaks and let other people do the work that you're normally doing. So weekly rhythms of rest, Mm -hmm. seasonal rhythms of rest. Mm -hmm. Melissa, I feel like you do this well. Hmm. Like you tell me, hey, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be out these couple days or whatever, like seasonal rhythms, right? Where you just depart. Yeah. And what what are are the things that you love to do? You have to, first of all. You just have to. Weekly and seasonally. I love... I love vacations. I love travel. I love exploring new places. Now that my kids are of an age where they enjoy it too, it's even more fun. You know, like I love exploring. I'm a hospitality person, so I love hotels. I love a good hotel. (laughs) But I also grew up camping in the middle of nowhere Hmm. every year. And so I remember when I told you guys about my RV trip, you guys meaning our team. I think you guys were pretty impressed with me, I must say. (laughs) It was awesome. That, I, was, so that good. was like my favorite vacation we've ever taken. We did a seven or eight day vacation in an RV. Had never done it before wow. as a family. And I were sold. Like my family <laughs> fully came sure. alive in this moment, you know, being out in nature and smelling the campfire, yeah. you know, waking up in the morning to hear like the birds and the wind and just murmuring of people in a campground. Yeah. Like to me, those are some of my favorite 
wow. noises because I grew up doing that, like camping in a tent and waking up to that kind of stuff. So, that's so super but light. you're so in charge of the things at your church, right? They need, like, they need you. Right. Like, how how are you in a sp- space and a place in your head where you can depart and leave that? It's hard, but we prep it, like, right, like okay. in advance. This is I'm going out. Yeah. We're leaving. We're going to be on this vacation. And now my husband and I are worker bees. Yeah. Like we are committed. We are there. We forgo, We sacrifice a lot, honestly, because our church is on Saturday nights. And so we do sacrifice it, but we don't care. Like we love mm-hmm. it, right? Um, so we make a lot of sacrifices and our kids do the same, but we love it. But there are moments like we have to have a weekend. We have to mm-hmm. have a week where we go. And so I will do everything to say we the Kellers will not be there, period, end of story. <laughs> sure. Now, mind you, this RV trip, this was actually in the middle of Zoom land, right? Like pandemic stuff. And I did have to hop onto Zoom because I sure. someone couldn't log in. So I'm on a boat in the middle of a lake <laughs> on my Zoom. And I'm Hilarious. like, I'll hop in and like help you out. Right. Like, I'll help out. But I, sure. I have to plan it in advance and just tell everyone. like, And then kind That's of you, you prep it. And if so... Practically speaking, for worship leaders and people, maybe that means you bring in a guest. Sure. Right? Yeah. You say, you go, yep. I just, no one will take over for me. Well, I'm sure you have friends. And if you don't, come to a retreat and you'll make friends. Yeah. Right? And then you bring in a guest. Like, yep. this person's going to come lead worship this weekend because I'm going to go. I yeah. need a break. You know? Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, if you were to expire, <laughs> we oftentimes say get hit by a bus, a Sunday's going to happen. Yeah. So, somebody's some some cousin or uncle or friend of a friend somebody's going to fig yeah I'll play mm-hmm. sure right they'll figure it out right mm-hmm. we are replaceable yeah yeah <laughs> so you might as well just go ahead and have those moments where you disappear and see how the system works yeah see how it works when they don't replace that battery that you always remember to replace you know or they don't know how to hit the projector the right way to get it to work just let it happen let those systems kind of fail because we're all going to leave our churches yeah. eventually everyone even the most committed of us will not be in our church forever our local church we're going to move on so um just encourage you guys to find breaks find spaces to where you crave them mm-hmm. you know i crave my day off now I crave the rhythm and the system and the pandemic clothes I wear on my on my day off. Mm-hmm. I crave not checking my email and it all piling up and opening it up on Tuesday and it being I like I'm like, dude, that's so awesome. You know. So those rhythms are good. Encourage you to find those rhythms. Yeah weekly rhythms, and then these annual rhythms, like this retreat is a really great rhythm. Many people have walked into it and use it and just encourage you guys to go for it. We love you. We love you. We do. We love our community of the Vineyard. We love the whole church. We serve the whole church, but we really love this special thing that we have. We do. With our little group of 500 churches, it's like such a precious thing. Mm -hmm. And you guys are really important to us. And you're not alone. Like, we just want you to know that wherever you're at, even if you're new to the vineyard and you're kind of figuring this thing out, like you're not alone. There's phone calls. Dude, I just want to share this testimony. I got a testimony. I posted on our vineyard worship. We have a vineyard worship leader Facebook page. So if you're a Facebook person, that's a great place to share your set list, share your concerns, share your worries. We also have a, a sound tech version of that. So vineyard sound and media text. I posted on there the other day, hey, we need a stage box for our soundboard because we got tired of putting the soundboard next to the stage. And somebody mailed me a thousand dollars worth of stuff sitting in their back of their chair. Wow. (laughs) They just mailed it to me. So like, you never know. Like there's so much help and support within our system. Yeah. It's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Yeah. It's community, you know? And so, and we're talking about this at a bigger level, right? For Vineyard USA, just yeah. about being in community with yeah. one another, being in relationship with one another, not being on an island like you're like yeah. you're saying. And and we feel that for our worship community as well. Like just exactly what you're saying. Like you have support around you that you probably don't even know that you have. And even more locally than you realize that you have. But you just need to take a moment to kind of make space for that and figure that out, you know, like yeah. make time for that to figure out who those people are and yeah. 
This is one of the ways, by going yeah. to retreat and meeting people. You'll meet people you never knew live nearby you, you know, yeah. or, or friends even a, you can have across the country, but now you have a friend that you can talk to, yeah. talk to about church things and life things, and, you know, it's, it's a huge value. It's so good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Melissa, for hanging out. Thanks, Mike. And this is a great idea to steal Adam's gear Heck and yeah. do this every once in a while. You guys connect with us. If you go to vineyardworship.com, you'll find Melissa and I's contact information there. If you got questions about Vineyard School of Worship, training yourself or your people, we're doing training stuff all throughout the year. New Worship leaders, sound techs, bands, you name it, we're going to do training with it. And if you got more questions about the retreat, contact Melissa, and we'll get back with you. We're so thankful for each of you. So yes. you guys have a great week. Take it easy. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey everyone, Casey Corum here, producer of the podcast. Thanks for listening. As always, if you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. First of all, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Also connect with us on social media, Instagram at the Ferment Podcast and Twitter at Fermentcast. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace. Peace.